Hello and welcome to what is my last update as Dunleary Rattown Musician in, in Residence. Um, the music I've composed is all finished now, um, the Dunleary Guitarist piece, and um, it's been in the process of being recorded. Um, now it was due to be premiered on the 30th of July, but we've um, extended the, the date now to the 20th of August, just to give a bit more time to prepare the, the recording and uh, the videos and, and get it all looking and sounding great. Um, but um, this will be the last update I'll be doing because the, officially the residency ends for me on the 30th of July. I've had a great time working on the project um, with uh, with Kieran Swift and his students at the Guitar Training Centre and uh, also everyone at Music Network and Dunleary Rattown County Council. So thanks to everyone for, for being involved and thanks to you for watching my updates and I hope you tune in to the, the premiere on the um, 30th or sorry the 20th of August and um, I just thought for my last update I'd, I'd talk a bit about uh, some aspects of the, the composition that I haven't really uh, got into and uh, where the influences come from and, and a lot of um, these other aspects they would come from classical composers and um, both older like from previous centuries and, and contemporary composers and so i've done a playlist of um some of my favorite composers from from the classical kind of music traditions um going from j.s bach in the baroque period up to uh, contemporary composers like john adams um steve reich and philip glass and um so um but most of those guitarists or sorry, most of those composers um, don't play guitar, or none of them actually play guitar, really. Um, and very few of them have actually composed anything significant for the guitar, except for uh, Steve Reich and John Adams have done some significant ensemble pieces for guitar. Um, so most of the pieces on the playlist are actually arrangements of Bach, Beethoven, Sibelius, Shostakovich, Stravinsky, composers like that. Um, but the, all these composers influences influence me as a composer for the way they um write music for their techniques they use for orchestrations they do and um so like just some of the just the way they think about music how they their idea of expanding on traditions that went before and uh, creating new sounds and while the stuff i compose isn't exactly like any of them it's my own kind of thing you can hear little influences from them in parts and you'll hear some of the influences um in parts of the piece i've composed like um i can immediately like, think of an obvious influence from say the american minimalist composer steve reich he's kind of uh, one of the techniques he's kind of um known for is this kind of pulsing sound which is kind of like a it might be on a chord like that kind of a sound now, he didn't invent that kind of a thing. It's like there's kind of similar pulsings in Baroque music. Um, but it, the particular way he did it is kind of distinctive. And, and uh, in this piece, um, I have a bit of that. at the, Just at the very start of the second movement of, called the Leary Dart, there's a bit of a, a pulsing that uh, goes like this. And when it's, it's allied to the the chord, the strumming chord is like. You hear um, chords like that, you know. And towards the end of the piece, then there might be some influence, like from Philip Glass, and he's famous for using. Uh, different kind of uh, arpeggios and things against each other in different rhythms so one might be going like and another might go at the same time and um, th then in, in, towards the end of of uh, Dunery Dart piece there's literally one of the guitarists is doing this going um
but that's not how the piece is. If if I were to do it just like that, it would just sound like a Philip Glass piece, and like I'm I'm stealing from totally from Philip Glass. But that's just part of the overall texture, and and you'll hear you'll find something like that in Schubert. You'll find in 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 um, Beethoven. You know that those kind of figures aren't Philip Glass didn't invent them, but the way he put them together was kind of his thing. Um, so where my kind of I suppose development comes is that alongside that I have a kind of a figure from Congolese guitar style is there. There's another figure going. And that kind of a figure could come from either rock guitar or, or um, baroque music you know it's just an ascending kind of thing and and then you've got just like um a bass line that's like etc and it goes on like that and that kind of a bass line is you could say it's either coming from peter hook the new order bass player or it could be something that's again in baroque music uh, in vivaldi or something that Steve Reich might do with his pulsing, you know, if you were to play it in a certain way. Um, and then you've got the chord progression. Um, so when all those things, those elements combine, you get, I guess, my style of music it's it's like any composer most composers uh they they might sound completely original but you could analyze this little bit here and this little bit there and you can if you know the history of music you'll know well that idea came from this this kind of era or this kind of style or or and, and they just made it their own you know like steve reich his music style is like a combination between stravinsky bach some Ghanaian drumming, um, Indonesian gamelan and jazz influences as well, you know, like there's all sorts of influences in his music, but that's what makes his sound and it's a similar thing with me and uh, pretty much any composer who's trying to do their own thing. Um, so that's that movement. I want to move on to the the first movement, Dunleary Harbour, because with that I've moved into what they call um, in contemporary music they'd call extended techniques that's when you're doing something on the instrument that isn't the normal thing to do just to create a certain sound so the normal techniques on the guitar are just like this playing chords and uh, just playing the guitar normally but um, the, the I've talked before about harmonics Strictly speaking, that's an extended technique because you're doing something that's not a normal um, kind of thing to do in the guitar, and it's a technique that you learn about, you discover. You don't just find it just by strumming chords. Um, and so, in the piece, I, I think I mentioned it before um, in a previous uh, chat I did. Uh, I'm trying to emulate the sound of a. Uh, halyards on, on ships, on boats, which make these kind of sounds. When they're re rested in the harbour, you'll hear halyards making those kind of sounds. And um, So in the piece, it opens with that kind of sound, and uh, but uh, four different kind of variations of it put together. So like one is like a... I'm actually doing it like this, actually. That one is going, and then you've got another one going like... And then another one is on an offbeat to that. And then one last one is doing this. And then 
Alongside that, I have uh, some other effects that are like um, the boat creaking. I mentioned this a few weeks ago. This is using just your fingernail on the fretboard. You get this kind of sound. Which is like a creaking boat. And, um, and then my last technique is using a spoon, a little spoon, um, to imitate the sound of seagulls and other kind of birds around. So if you just use a spoon and you put it on the string like... You get that kind of sound. So at the start of the piece I combine all those sounds to create a, a little kind of uh, musical imitation of the sounds of a harbour. And um, I'm just going to play, uh, uh, show you a little uh, recording of that now, of me uh, playing those various sounds so you get a sense of what the piece starts with. So here's a, a little hint of the opening of the Leary Harbour. So that's some of the, the harbour sound effects in the piece, but um, after a short while those sounds merge with uh, some melodic fragments and uh, a bit of melody, And um, but they're kind of in, I, I mentioned a bit of it last week, a thing called a polymetric cycle, when you have different time signatures, different rhythms kind of repeating against each other until they meet up. And um, so I'll just, there's actually four of them go against each other um, for melodic patterns um, by the time we get to the middle of the piece you've got four going against each other and, and so the first one is like a bass line which is in three four So that you have a pattern in five eight five beats one two three four five one two three four five so So each utterance of that kind of 5-8 um, rhythm repeated six times coincides with a f uh, the 3-4 the repeated five times. And um, so the, the harmony changes then when they meet up each time. And um, just so you, you can hear what the two of them are like together, um, here's a quick little video I, I prepared of, of the two of them together. And then on top of that, you have um, a, a rhythm in 8-8 eight eight using harmonics again. So a, an 8-8 eight eight rhythm is like the rumba rhythm I mentioned that's in the second movement. And it's divided in 3-3-2, three, three, 1 2 3 one, two, three, one, two, three beats twice and then two beats. So it's like 1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-1-2-3-
and then um, um, after a while it goes another melody comes in on top of all of those it's kind of like the main melody a looping kind of melody that builds up and up and it's in a, a rhythm known as 6-4 six, six beats so <laughs> Say it and play it at the same time. One, two, three, five, six. That's in six four. I can't say it and play it at the same time, but eventually, as the piece goes on, I build that into a it changes key slightly. guitar again but slightly, slightly different kind of way of approaching it um, with the rhythms and that and, um, so then when those four different cycles are combined they come up with a sound that's uh, a bit like this There's some uh, examples of, of what the piece is going to sound like. Um, I don't want to spoil it all for the premiere, so that's all I'll go into for this week and uh, my final week. So I hope you tune in on the 20th of August. Um, I think it's at 7 p.m. Irish time it'll go out. And um, yeah, it's been fun putting it all together. Um, and just to explain the the uh, the first the, the piece is in two parts, and the first part I am um, I'm playing all myself I've overdubbed all the guitars and um, and it's going to go alongside a video of Dunleary Harbour that was uh, kindly lent to us by uh, a man called John Healy who filmed some beautiful drone footage um, of Dunleary Harbour and uh, so I've just kind of I found that after I'd composed the piece and I thought it matched well with the sounds and, and the, the piece of music so and then after that there's a video um, which uh, Ben Rawlins has helped put together of uh, myself, Kieran, and his students all playing the, the second part, Dunnery Dart. And um, I also have a video uh, I put just of me playing all those guitars uh, um, for the second movement as well uh, of Dunnery Dart and um, set to a, a train journey filmed by uh, a man called Stuart Moss. He'd filmed Dunleary, uh, a, a dart journey from Connolly Station in Dublin City Centre out to Dunleary. So we have that as a bit of a bonus encore as well um, available. And um, the, the music will also be available uh, in my own recordings of it to, to purchase on uh, Bandcamp from then. And uh, so mm. hope you enjoy it. Um, and thanks again for tuning in and thanks to everyone for being involved and it's uh, been a great experience and a uh, piece of music I've been meaning to compose since I was a teenager probably. I first had the idea to write some music based on the sounds and sights of Dunleary so that's it's great and um, yeah so I'll leave it at that and thanks again for tuning in. <laughs>